Oh man, we've seen this happening so many times before that it's really heartbreaking to actually see this happening to one of your favorite developers and one of the most beloved gaming companies in the past decade. But this is the reality right now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, of course, welcome back to some brand new Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay and news. And oh boy, does the news deliver for today, thanks to a brand new article by Jason Schreier. I believe that in the back of our minds, ever since the game's launch over a month ago, we always wondered what the heck happened over at CDPR for a game such as this to launch in the state we all know of. Well, inside Cyberpunk 2077's disastrous rollout is the title of the recent article and it fully on explains what actually went down. There's an interview with more than 20 current and former CD Projekt Red staff, most of whom requested anonymity so not to risk their careers, which depicts a development process marred with unchecked ambition, poor planning and technical shortcomings. Employees discussing the game's creation for the very first time described a company that focused on marketing at the expense of development and an unrealistic timeline that pressured some into working extensive overtime long before the final push. And yeah, this comes in full circle with the apology video that we had a few days ago where one of the leads over at CDPR um, came in, of course, they assumed the blame, they also talked about the fact that they would eventually fix the game and committed to it, um, but they also came in with some really interesting excuses for their shortcomings, especially a few of them that a lot of people saw through for what they really were. One in particular was the fact that um, the company apparently extensively tested the game before its release but did not encounter many of the issues that player experienced especially on the old gen of consoles. Well according to the interview developers who did work on the game argued otherwise saying that many of the common problems were in fact discovered, it's just that the staff did not have enough time to fix all of them prior to the game's launch. Now, now, speaking of the game's launch and development, here is a really interesting tidbit. Although Cyberpunk was announced in 2012, the company was then still mainly focused on their previous title, which was of course um, Witcher 3. It also had some expansions all the way up until 2016. And the development for Cyberpunk 2077 actually didn't start until late 2016, according to some employees. That was then CD Projekt essentially hit the reset button, according to people familiar with the project. So that is pretty wild. The game only started development four years after its initial announcement, which makes sense because they were busy with a really awesome game, with bringing a ton of content in Witcher 3 back then, so that is a time well spent. But this also means that Cyberpunk was only in development for a little bit over three years at this point. So could you imagine how the game would have been if it were to launch at the start of 2020 how it was initially planned? As a matter of fact, if you go through the article, it pretty much explains that many of the people who worked on the game did not even believe the game would come out anywhere near before 2022. So one person said they thought that the initial date that they planned with April 16, 2020 was a joke and instead they expected the game to be ready in 2022. Developers even created memes about the game getting delayed, making bets when it would happen. So this is essentially what happened over at CD Projekt Red. Now from a technical point of view, um, this didn't come without difficulty. Basically, the article explains that CDPR had to make a pretty substantial transition from a fantasy-based third-person RPG to a completely different first-person sci-fi, which um, of course involved investing into brand new technologies, new staff and new techniques that they had not explored before. Now, another indication of how CDPR stretched things too far was that it tried developing the engine technology behind Cyberpunk 2077, most of which was of course brand new, simultaneously with the game which slowed down production. One member of the team compared the process to trying to drive a train while the tracks are being laid in front of you at the very same time. Another very big obstacle that uh, seems to have risen very early in the development was the fact that at least the heads over at CDPR changed directions completely very early on in the development process. So this explains the studio head Adam Badowski took over as a director, demanding overhauls to 
Cyberpunk's gameplay and story. For the next year, which in this case seems to imply it was 2017, everything was changing, including fundamental elements like the gameplay perspective. Top staff who had worked on The Witcher 3 had strong opinions on how Cyberpunk should be made, which clashed with Badowski and led to the eventual departure of several top developers. So yeah, this explains partially some of the strange design decisions that we have in Cyberpunk 2077. This includes everything from um, the removal of some of the cutscenes or, well, many of the cutscenes in the game, all the way to why the game doesn't have a third-person perspective. I'm pretty sure at this point that it is safe to bet that in an early version, an early concept of Cyberpunk, um, most of the developers probably envisioned it as a third-person kind of game, or at least a game that supports third-person. At least that's what I'm reading from um, this, um, this paragraph right here, especially when it mentions that gameplay perspective. Like, um, it doesn't make sense for us to have so many customization options, for it to be so rich in detail when it comes to your character's development, only for it to be fully on first person and almost never see that outside of maybe just some photo shoots and um, a few mirrors here and there. So that was a pretty lost opportunity right here, which is, again, a pretty big shame. Like, so many people wanted this game a third person, um, and we finally have closure on that. It was probably intended at some point for this game to be in the third person as well. Now the part of the article that to me is most shocking is the one regarding the trailer at E3 2018, um, which again is a trap that a lot of developers in the past fell into and even more so some that were very beloved only for them to fall from the um, consumer's grace. So much of the CD project's focus, according to several people who worked on Cyberpunk, was on impressing the outside world. A slice of gameplay was showcased at E3, in this case it was um, E3 2018. It showed the main character embarking on a mission, giving players a grand tour of the CD crime ridden night city. Fans and journalists were wowed by Cyberpunk's ambition and scale, what they didn't know was that the demo was almost entirely fake. Does it ring any bells? Because it definitely reminds us of Bioware. And yeah, it seems that CD Projekt Red hadn't even yet finalized and coded the underlying gameplay systems, which is why so many features, such as the car ambushes, were missing from the final product. Remember those? Because we had those in the 2018 trailer. Um, developers said that they felt like the demo was a waste of months and should have gone towards making the game instead. So yeah, really, really bad management decisions right here. Such a shame that um, this game could have been so much more amazing if things didn't went this way. Even if like they just took a couple more years and go with the initial 2022 like um, speculation they had internally, it would have probably turned so much better, even if it still remained in the first person perspective. Moving on though, there is another important topic over here that needs to be discussed, which is of course um, the lack of many of the features that were promised in the game but eventually never delivered upon or simply were scaled down to a fraction of what was initially intended. Like even Night City was supposed to be way bigger than this. Um, probably we could say the same about car customization and even the length of the story. Um, what's uh, certain is that many of the scrapped features like wall running and other types of attacks and mechanics were also scrapped or downsized simply because the company did not have a big enough staff for what they wanted to do with the game and even more so did not have enough time and crunching simply did not help with that either. So despite the fact that the team had over twice the size of the Witcher 3 team, um, the employees were still working long hours even though um, Iwinski told the staff that overtime wouldn't be mandatory on Cyberpunk 2077 but more than a dozen workers said that they still felt pressured to put in extra hours by their managers or co-workers anyway. The overtime also didn't make development of the game any faster. At E3 in 2019, CD Projekt announced that the game would come out in April 16, 2020, and while the fans were elated internally, some members of the team could only scratch their heads, wondering how they could possibly finish the game by then. One person even said that they thought the date was a joke. Based on the team's progress, as they expected the game to be ready by 2022, or well, in 2022. Um, developers even 
created memes internally about the game getting delayed, making bets when it would happen. So this is the reason why we saw cancelling of features and scaling down of the size of Cyberpunk's Metropolis, um, which also helped with that, but it also meant we only get a fraction of what was initially um, at least promised. But the team's growth hampered some departments, developers have said. Um, at the same time, the article explains CD Projekt remained understaffed, games like Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2 often held up as examples of the quality the company wanted to uphold, were made by dozens of offices and thousands of people, when CD Projekt Red had a little bit over 500 internal developers, uh, most of which felt siloed and unorganized according to um, the interviews right here. On a final note, we also found out why the company couldn't wait like 6 more months or 1 year or a couple more years until the game was in a proper state and it seems that um, their goal was to release Cyberpunk before the new consoles from Microsoft and Sony expected in the fall of 2020 that were even announced. Um, that way the company would launch the game on existing PS4s, Xbox Ones, PC and then double dip by releasing versions down the road for the next generation consoles. Um, people who bought the old console versions would receive free upgrades when the new ones were available as we already know but um, we all know that that uh, ended up in a in like the worst situation possible with the game getting completely delisted from one of the biggest platforms on the planet. Um, some engineers even realized that Cyberpunk was too complex of a game to run well on the seven year old consoles with its city full of bustling crowds and hulking buildings. Um, they said management dismissed their concerns however citing their success in pulling off The Witcher 3. So again remember how it went for uh, for Bioware, like um, that same old Bioware magic, while well, apparently CD Projekt Red pulled a Bioware magic on their staff as well, um, citing their success with The Witcher 3. So this is the current state of events, of course the article goes in a bit more length and explains a little bit more than I just mentioned, but I think that these are the main points right here. So you know what? We're still gonna continue playing the game, of course, I'm still excited about the future of the game, it's just a shame to see the company falling into the pits um, that so many previous to them fell before, and into these temptations that um, lead to nowhere, basically. But this is it with the news, thanks so much for watching, again, I would really love to know your opinion down below, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.